Hey everybody, welcome to the Free at Last podcast. I'm Mick. And I'm Tammy. And we're coming to you live from the Appalachian Mountains right here in eastern Kentucky. And um, we kind of have a heavy topic tonight and um, just uh, kind of keep us in prayer as we, as we, uh, as we traverse on. But um, before we get into all that, we of course want to do our quick business first. Um, we want to say to everybody who's listening on to Spotify and all the uh, podcast uh, apps, if you'd like to be a part of our uh, live, our live audience while we do these uh, podcast episodes, you can be a part of our Patreon at three dollars a month. We'll get you into the the first group at Free at Last Podcast. And if you'd like to have more, somebody say, there's more? There's more? Then you can be a part of the $5 a month and be a part of uh, this group and the Tier 2 where we're going to offer more teachings and just uh, more kind of fun stuff. Um, Yeah, all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, tonight is... I've always said that uh, we're going to talk about the the hard issues here um, on Free at Last podcast, and definitely yesterday, as I was um, kind of praying and and seeking the Lord about what He wanted us to do on this episode, it just kind of dropped in my spirit uh, to talk about suicide and. Um, It's one of those things that I don't think that the church addresses nearly enough. Um, it's it's a hard issue to tackle. Uh, from one angle, I'm going to come from it. Um, for most of you guys that know me, um, I've shared my testimony a little bit from when I was uh, younger that God delivered me from suicide. Uh, when I was a teenager, um, I was bound up by the devil and, and um, didn't think that I had a purpose in life. And um, as a teenager, I attempted to uh, take my life uh, two or three times. But I'm not really going to uh, go into detail of all that because we. this will probably be more than a one episode thing. Uh, cause it's one of those topics that you just can't cover the broad aspect of everything in 30 minutes. Um, so before we get into everything, I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, sister Karen and sister Sue, sister Angie. We want to thank you guys and sister Mary for, uh, for joining us tonight. And, uh, S- sister Tammy, what do you have to say? <laughs> Well, we want to do. Um, we want to say that there is a national hotline for suicide. If you are having thoughts of suicide or know someone that is suicidal, it is nine eight eight, and you can just call that number and someone will talk with you. Also, um, if you don't feel comfortable talking, they do do a text option. Text nine eight eight. And online at 988lifeline.org. And we also want to add, too, I've said before, like if you're here in the group and and if you deal with these kind of issues and say that you don't feel comfortable talking to uh, me or Sister Tammy about it, um, I've said this before, but in the group I've designated uh, different people in the group uh, they have the title in the group as group experts. And uh, what that means is, like, if there's something that you don't feel comfortable talking to us about, uh, the people that you see with that title, group experts, these are also um, excellent people that I would highly recommend. Uh, most of them are people that we have known in ministry for a long time, and and we would we wouldn't have any issue at all going to counsel for them, um, going to counsel from them, any issues that we've ever had. So we highly recommend them. Um, 
One of the biggest questions that um, always comes up, um, especially like if you're in any kind of uh, pastoral role, is, well, my loved one um, committed suicide. Are they in heaven or are they in hell? And as a minister, I have to be really careful how I tread here. Um, I would say, because I don't want to sound like that taking your life is not a reverent thing. It really is. Um, when it comes to about the forgiveness of sins, um, if that choice is made, I think that's the kind of judgment that the Bible tells us not to judge. Because like, if we try to figure out which side of the fence that people land on, then that kind of puts us in the judgment seat of God. And us as believers and followers of God, we're not meant to sit there. I will say this, that as far as I know, the only unpardonable sin in the Bible is the blas the blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. Um, now, that's not to say, <clears throat> excuse me, that's not to say that there wouldn't be consequences for doing such a measure, but that is to that is to say that whatever you do with your life in this life, you are going to be held accountable accountable for good or bad. Um, you know, God knows all things. He knows the condition of your heart. He knows the condition of your mind. He knows. Um, he knows how much you you can handle. He knows how much you can handle. Um, so my my opinion on on the matter when it comes to that, only God knows. And you know, we can't if we try to sit back and wonder which way, one way or the other, that the judgment of the other people that have committed suicide the way it has went, uh, then we allow the enemy a place in our mind to torment us. And that's not the will of God. Um, you know, wherever the chips may land um, in every situation, we just have to trust God because God is the ultimate judge and the... Um, the ultimate decider in every case like that. And two, you know, when we're talking about suicide, I do believe that it is a spirit of oppression that comes upon someone to have those thoughts and to dwell on those thoughts. And, you know, we've talked about the battle being in our minds because a lot of people don't understand you know they would say well you don't understand what I go through you don't understand what's going on in my mind and you know when you're talking about suicide and suicide prevention it's also important to identify risk that these um, individuals may have and they may have mental illness and they may have um something that requires medical diagnoses. And so you have to be, um, you know, very, um, you have to be very empathetic to someone who is having these thoughts or talking about having um, uh, these thoughts go on in their mind and they're wanting to act upon it. And, you know, you've got to really, um, be compassionate toward them. You don't want to trigger them. You don't want to um, give them that hope of suicide um, because there may be something mental that's going on there that would need medical assistance. And that's another thing, too. It's like we, I know we come from a faith movement and we, we believe God can heal and, and God can raise from the dead. But Tammy and I also believe, and, you know, just as a point of vulnerability, we also believe, even though that we're uh, believers in 
that kind of faith movement. We're also on medicine too. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's and not to make like a lot of the situation, but we believe God is a healer, and we also believe God heals in many ways. Um, I think it would be foolish of the body of Christ not to take advantage of the advancements that God has uh, advanced in medicine today. Um, Because I don't want to come across as some of the ministers that I've I've seen and heard that that condemns people for trying to get the mental help they need. Um, Because... When when you do that, you just put God in a box, and um, and I also want to say because uh, Sister Sue, uh, she commented, um, let me find that comment. She said, uh, "That's a subject I've been hearing about, but most people don't want to discuss it." I was talking uh, with a friend about this yesterday. Thank you for discussing this. Um, and, and first off, too, I want to say, like, if anybody in the group uh, that has experienced uh, a loved one that's committed suicide, the only thing I can say is I, I'm terribly, we are terribly sorry. It's like we don't know um, the words to say. Um Sometimes the best thing we can do is just pray. Um, but I, I do know that, um, you know, I, I do know the weight of being in that situation because that's one one of the things that um, that God delivered me out of as a teenager. Um, and, you know, I, I just... I just don't know what to say other than, you know, God be with you. That you yourself, if you've had that happen, you have a friendship base here. You have a safe place that you are able to talk through those things that you're feeling. Um, Because with that, the family members are left feeling you know, a lot of emotion after that happens. There's anger. There's, you know, there's the what ifs. What if I'd done this? What if I'd done that? And that's normal because, you know, we're all human and we have that human emotional seed within us that, you know, can feel guilt or can feel um, like you could have done something differently. And we cannot make, um, you know, those things cannot be made to be put upon us. And so just know that you have a safe environment here if you want to talk, um, you know, about some of those things that you are dealing with as a family member. And one thing uh, we want to do, too, we want to give some of the warning signs um, and this is kind of like along the same lines, like when we talked about the occultic church. Um, some of these, you know, that I'm going to gonna talk about, some of them are just signs of depression. But like if you see like multiple signs compiled, then you might need to start praying because like when there becomes three or four of these compounded on top of each other, then chances are you're dealing with a heavier spiritual warfare uh, with that person that's uh, displaying these signs. And the first one, um, they're going to have like a, they're going to talk about death a lot. Um, They're almost going to be like, and they might not come out and say death, but they might be infatuated with like the afterlife and, and that kind of thing. And this is like a big one to look out for. They're they're going to be, they're going to talk about feeling worthless. Um, they're going to say stuff like, uh, "What's the use?" and "I just don't see no no way out." Um, 
and um, they're going to be withdrawing a lot. And um, yeah, that's that's another good sign to watch out for. And you know, I, I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I mean, I'm feeling like weird. Like um, I know yesterday when this topic came on my heart. Um, I just really feel like, you know, if there's anybody within our close, uh, knit group here that if you're experiencing any of these signs, please, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, because, uh, me and Tammy and, and I know most of the people in the group, um, we we don't mind to be transparent. We don't mind to be approachable. Um, we are here to help you because we know that if we can help you, we can help advance God's kingdom, God's purpose in you. You do have a call. You do have a purpose. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy because the enemy is afraid of what God has placed on the inside of you. Um, that's what all of the battle is all about. Because you have the divine purpose of God on the inside of you, and the enemy is trying to snuff it out. Um, the scripture that comes to mind was when um, Jesus told Peter, he says, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for you. And you might be going through that process right now where you feel like you're being sifted like wheat, but Jesus is on your side. He has a purpose and 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 a plan for your life that only you can fulfill, and that that's just awesome. And one of these I found uh, really interesting. It says they suddenly seem happy and calmer, especially after a period of depression or sadness. And this is like one of the biggest signs to watch out for, but because if they've been depressed for a while, and they come out and they uh, seem like everything's fine that's not the time to stop praying because usually that's when they come to the resolve of they get in their mind what they're going to do uh, the next one is giving away prize possessions um, especially if it's stuff that they cling to that that they love uh, things they love to be involved with every day like in my case it would be my guitars <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's another ma major red flag um, sister Day. and also we want to bring um, you know awareness because if you watch the news especially the local news just in our state of Kentucky there have been numerous murder suicides that have taken place where one family member will end the lives of their family and then themselves. And, you know, it's like, to me, that's being selfish. Um, you know, they feel like that that's the only way to handle the situation. And, you know, we've really got to pray, like Mickey said, um, keeping not being nosy, but keeping an eye on your family and friends, checking in with them. Um, how are you doing? How's the kids doing? And, you know, if you can keep people talking, um, you know, eventually they do open up and they will share with you maybe some struggles that they're going through. But that is definitely an important thing to do is, um, especially on your job sites, um, you know, make it a point to get to know your coworkers, um, you know, where that you feel comfortable talking with them, um, you know, one on one with your neighbors, with your friends, um, because a lot of people, like I've said it before, a lot of people, they fight battles that no one even knows about. And so we just want to be mindful of that as well. One thing I'll share too, like uh, that I shared with our youth group, uh, when I was going through that as a teenager, um, and I encouraged them because, um, you know, as kids in school, you can you can tell who the troubled kids are, um, 
And I told them that there were so many days, the days I did go to school, because most of the time I just I skipped out. But the times I did go to school, there there was always, I had encounters with some uh, true believing kids. And um, I'm convinced that a couple of those occasions um, prolonged, you know, it it fought back the demons that were fighting me at the time because just for that glimpse of a uh, glimpse of time, like they gave me a reason to have hope. I didn't know Jesus at the time, but they they gave me that glimpse of hope that maybe maybe there there still are decent people in the world. Um but yeah, if it um and and I say that just just so we we as carriers of the light of uh, of the light of Jesus that sometimes we need to um we have to penetrate the darkness and um I I do believe that uh, God has called us to be more mindful um of our surroundings not just our surroundings but but to get closer to people in general um because and this is one of my faults but I kind of like to be left alone <laughs> and I know that's sounds weird but it's like I'm I'm a very private person um but and it's kind of hard because the only way you can spread Jesus is, is you have to get to know people <laughs> yeah and that's hard to do and when you think about Jesus he he was around the people so much that he had to get away he had to take uh, sabbaticals, you know. He had to get away from himself for his, I'm sure, for his own mental health. But um, because you know, even though he was fully God, he was still wrapped up in that blanket of humanity as well. Um, but yeah, I I believe that um, God is calling us to be watchful. Um, and and don't be don't be deceived either just because uh, somebody's a believer um they could be struggling with it more than than an outsider could um i i do believe that the time we're living in that you know that there's been an onslaught of demons released against against the church and against the family and against anything that represents god um, so yeah, we need to be, we need to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. And so we just want to put that out there. The national hotline is 988 and you can just call that directly and someone will be there to talk with you. It is anonymous. Um, and also you can do that by text 988 or online at 988lifeline.org. And, you know, like Mickey said earlier, we're here. Give us, uh, contact us and, um, you know, we'll be happy to pray with you, talk with you. Um, like he said, this is a very, um, heavy issue, but it's one that I believe that we need to be aware of and talk about more often. Amen. And uh, Sister Sue said uh, she's like that, too, as far as being private. She says we have to be aware and see the issue, but we also have to protect ourselves. And that's very true because um, that's that's a hard lesson to learn is healthy boundaries. And uh, we've, we've had to learn that the hard way. Uh, sometimes the only thing you can do is pray and step away because... <laughs> Because we've learned the hard way, too. It's like when we try to, quote, unquote, fix it, the more we get ourselves and, and do the situation more trouble than good. But, yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, we want to give everybody a shout out here real quick. Sister Sue, Pastor Rama, Sister Mary, Brother George. 
Uh, Brother George says, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. He isolates people to tear them apart. We must stay engaged and watchful. Amen. Amen. And Brother Josh, give him a shout out. But we want to thank you guys and uh, Sister Karen as well. We want to thank you guys for all your prayers. Uh, thanks to everybody that watches the the replays. Um, for everything that you guys do in the body, I know that a lot of you serve in different churches um, in the county, out of the county. Uh, me and Tammy, we serve in Carter County. But we know, like a lot of uh, a lot of the people in here, serve in Round County and Bath County, uh, probably some in West Liberty and Fleming County too. And we just want to say thank you for for uh, not to sound like Ray Bolts, but but thank you for what you do for the Lord. Um, Amen. We know that lives are being changed, and just because you don't see the results. Doesn't mean that God isn't taking taking account of all the good works that you're doing, and we are thankful to be on the same team that you guys are. All right, we have Sister Amanda. She says prayers for those battling suicides and demonic spirits. Amen. But um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and sign off and um, just just keep that in your prayers. Um, keep your your inner circle and and everybody that God has put in the sphere of your influence, uh, keep them covered in prayer. Because uh, I know that, you know, we've been doing this a little bit over a year, and this is the first time that God has ever dropped this heavy of a subject on me to do, um, to cover like this. So um, I know it's a God thing. Because it, it's not an easy thing, but it's a God thing. And and I I just hope and pray that um, it gets through to who it needs to get to. And uh, we'll trust and that it'll do it. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Until next time, guys, God bless. Have a good week. We love you.